Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 3 Late Night. Welcome back everybody, I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Uh, we stopped uh, doing subnetting in our last video. Uh, we will continue from there for this video and then we will introduce another concept called supernetting. Without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's video. Before we continue, I need to show you this. I mean, <laughs> I know most of you would be asking, why is Imran showing all these irrelevant stuff? I mean, pictures of things that is not even connected to networking. Well, maybe that's my way of teaching uh, and I'm sure that's helping a lot of people. We, you, I try to take your everyday objects and try to link it to the concept that I'm teaching. So let's talk about the digital clock. Now, everybody, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows how to read a digital clock. Now, uh, according to this picture, it is 13 hours, 45 minutes, 27 seconds, right? So the next second after this is 13 hours, 45 minutes, 28 seconds. So if you keep adding one second to the time it would reach a point where it goes to 13 hours 45 minutes 59 seconds you add one more second to that it becomes 13 hours 46 minutes and 00, zero seconds then the, pr the process continues you keep adding seconds it goes to 45 59 seconds then it becomes 46 zero zero seconds so every time it reaches 59 it resets itself to zero and adds one to the previous place now similarly a point would come where it becomes 13 hours 59 minutes 59 seconds you add one more second there it becomes 14 zero 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 one second before 14 zero 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 is 13 59 59 but that's how a digital clock works and we all know that so one second before 1400 hours is not 1300 hours it is 1300 hours 59 minutes 59 seconds right remember this concept because we would be using this in our ip addressing schemes right let's start with class b subnetting we'll take this ip address 172.16.100.225 and uh, we know the default subnet mask is 255.255.0.0 let's try and break this into two subnets from what we know already we know that to break a network into two we borrow one bit like what we see here let me take a pen all right so we see that one bit is borrowed now from what we know already one bit borrower means you get two subnets two to the power one which also means that you get 2 to the power 15 15 is nothing but the number of zeros so 2 to the power 15 minus 2 hosts that is 32,766 valid hosts how do we get the first networks network ID we know this from our previous video we remember for a class B 172.16 is class B so this is the default subnet mask and this is where the default division is right so the first network id is going to be where you do 172.16 and make everything else that you see here in green which is the host part make everything as zero so the first network id is 172.16.0.0 how do we get the second network id the second network id is got by adding the place value of the last one so last one here is this the place value is 128 now this is the critical bit in class C we added that to the last octet why did we do that because that last one was part of this last octet in this case in this particular case the last one is part of the third octet so we would be adding that 128 to the third octet so the first network id is 172.16.0.0 the next network id is 172.16.128.0 see this last one was part of the third octet so we added that place value to the third octet can we add one more can we have one more network no we can't because if we add 128 again it becomes 172.16.256.0 which is not right because 256 is not a valid uh, valid IP address so also we know that 
by borrowing one bit we're breaking it into only two so we can't have the third network id how do we get the broadcast id broadcast id is one minus the next network id so one minus 128.0 is 127.255 remember the digital clock 1400 hours minus one second is 1359.59 so 128.0 minus 1 is 127.255 which is our 255 is the largest number right and the broadcast id of the last network as we always know is making everything as 255 like the first network id is 0.0, .0. the last broadcast id is 255 255 it's very very simple isn't it right because of this borrowing what happens to our subnet mask our subnet mask is 128.0 because this 1000000000 is 128.0 and that is nothing but slash 17 because we borrowed one bit it's very easy i don't know why people mm, think it's such a big deal i don't think so it is very simple all you need to know is know the basics and that's how easy it is okay let's try another example 172.16.100.225 the same ip address but this time we're going to break it into four subnets so from what we know already to break a network into four subnets we borrow two bits this is the two borrowed bits uh, from the same uh, formula from what we know already two bits is two to the power two is four subnets and two to the power 14 which is nothing but the number of zeros minus two is 16382 valid hosts how do we get the first network id now this is something you should be doing it like that it should be it it should be second nature for you first network id is 172.16.0.0 .0. exactly right how do we get the next or subsequent uh, network ids we know we need to add the place value that of the last bit place value of the last bit is 64 where is the last bit it's on the third octet so we need to add 64 to the third octet so it's 172.16.0.0 add 64 it becomes 64.0 add another 64 it becomes 128.0 add another 64 it becomes 192.0 can we add another 64 no because it becomes 256.0 which is not valid one that's one way of looking at it and we know there are only four networks two to the power two is four so we only have four networks fantastic how do we get the broadcast id now that's the question again one minus the next network id so in the first case it is 64.0 the next network id minus one is 172.16.63.255 remember the digital clock now you know a digital clock how it works that's exactly how this works so 64.0 minus 1 is not 63.0 remember it is 63.255 the reason i am stressing on this is this is the most common mistake students do 64.0 minus 1 they do 63.0 which is wrong and they lose a lot of marks don't do that 64.0 minus 1 is 63.255 the broadcast id for the second network is 127.255 third is 191.255 fourth is 255.255 because that's the last network and like we know from what we know already the last network's broadcast id is going to make everything 255 when i say everything everything of the green section so the first network id is making everything as zero of the host part and the last broadcast id is making 255 for the host part that's very 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 easy guys this is very easy you just have to get that mindset that this is going to be easy and it really is easy people just make it so complicated that they think it's a big deal it is not a big deal right to continue this new subnet mask is 255.255.192.0 and since we borrowed two bits it is slash 18 fantastic let's get into class a again it's the same concept all that changes is here the host part is spanning three octets 
in class C, the host part spanned only one octet. In class B, it spanned two octets. In class A, it spanned three octets. Now let's break this into two network. We know the drill. Borrow one bit. Where is the borrow bit? The borrow bit is still in the second octet. Consider another case where the borrows you had borrowed, let's say, eight or nine bits. If you borrow nine bits, what happens? It goes here. Then what you would be working is you would be working on the third octet, right? We will work on an example a little later in this video. But for now, uh, we are working on the second octet. The place value of the second octet is 128, yeah? So like we already know, one bit borrowing gives us two subnets and the valid host is derived with the number of zero so 2 to the power of 23 minus 2 is 8 million 388 thousand six hundred and six hosts that's a big 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 number <laughs> in your practical life you will not see such large networks or such large subnets with ha which has 8 million hosts that's not practical we would be breaking it down to smaller subnets fine let's get into this question so what is the network ID of the first network? We know this very, very well by now. So the first network is making everything as zero. So it is 10 dot zero dot zero dot zero. How do we get the next network ID? We add the place value of the last bit. So the last one is 128 and it's in the second octet. So we add 128 to the second octet to get the network ID. How do we get the broadcast ID? Now this is exactly why I asked you to think and compare IP addresses to the digital clock. 128 minus 1, what is it? You guys tell me. Yes, it is 127.255.255. Fantastic. And the last broadcast ID, as we always know, it is 255.255.255. Everything is 255. Fantastic guys, this is brilliant. I mean, it is so, so easy. I think this is this should be introduced in class one. <laughs> all right, all right, I know it's not that easy, but I mean, I think it is fairly easy. Uh, because of the changes that happened, because of this new borrowing, the subnet mask becomes 255.128.0.0. And uh, of course, it because one, bo one bit borrowed, the slash 8 becomes slash 9 right fantastic let's take another example all right this time you guys are going to do it I'm just going to run this w animation so breaking a network into four what do we do yes borrow two bits fantastic you guys are learning you guys are very very fast two bit borrowing gives us four networks fantastic and that has four million one hundred and ninety four thousand three hundred and two valid hosts what is the network ID of the first network? We all know this. Make everything into zero. Fantastic. So it is going to be 10 dot, zero dot, zero dot, zero. Fantastic. How do we get the next network ID or the subsequent network IDs? We add the place value of the last bit. In this case, it is 64 and it is in the second octet. So we add 64 to the second octet. So the network ID of network 2 is 10.64.0.0. Then it is 10.128.0.0. Then it is 10.192.0.0. How do we get the broadcast ID? We did this so many times. By now, you guys should be doing it without even thinking about it. So it is 10.63.255.255. Broadcast ID 2 is 10.127.255.255. Broadcast ID 3 is 10.191.255.255. Broadcast ID 4, which is the last broadcast ID, is nothing but 10.255.255.255. Because of the changes that happened, the new subdent mask is 255.192.0. Dot zero and uh, because of the change it is slash 10 now guys this is absolutely kindergarten stuff really kindergarten stuff well I think uh, going through the last video on this video I'm sure you guys can do this just like your alphabets 
fantastic let's get into this magic table now this magic table if you remember subnetting will be even more easier there's nothing to remember it's very straightforward the place value is what we always learned you start with 1 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 it's nothing but doubling and the mask value so when we borrow one bit the place value is 128 which also makes this mask value for that particular octet as 128 so that is nothing but the same number 128 how do we get the uh, subsequent numbers so 128 plus 64 will give you 120 192 192 plus 32 will give you 1224 plus 16 will give you 240 plus 16 will give you 248 plus 16 will give you 252 plus uh, 2 will give you 254 and then 255 so in your subnet mask these are the eight values that's valid so if you give you a subnet mask of, of 255.127.0.0 that's not valid subnet mask valid subnet mask should be within these eight numbers so if your subnet mask is not within any of these eight numbers that means that subnet mask is invalid remember that's why i ask you to buy hard this table i mean at least these eight numbers you need to know these are standard numbers either 128 192 224 240 248 252 254 or 255 your subnet mask i'm reiterating this again your subnet mask has to be one of these numbers you cannot have any other number in your subnet mask simple as that fantastic let's get into requirements this is going to be real uh, exam type question so with they give you a network and they give you slash 24 so 172.10.21.21 slash 24 now first thing you need to know is 172 what is that that is class part of a class b right i mean by default it is class b 172 so class b we know is slash 16 now in this case it is slash 24 that means the 8 bit that is excess of 16 has been borrowed so the 24th bit this bit comes in the third octet if you know the i mean if you if you if you count tw slash 24 the 24th bit comes in the third octet right and the place value is 1 that means we need to add 1 to the third octet to keep getting subsequent network id what is the first network id we know this 172.10.0.0 like you see here and the broadcast id is 0 0.255 how did i get 0 0.255 it is nothing but i know the next network id is going to be 172.10.1.0 because we are adding 1 to the third octet so i know 172.10.1.0 1, .1, 1 minus that is 10.172.10.0.255 similarly the next network id is 2.0 so the broadcast id is 1.255 so that goes on on and on until i reach what i am looking for so i'm looking for 10, 172 10.21.21 which is nothing but i am i should be looking for the network id 172.10.21.0 so that's the network id 172.10.21.0 and the broadcast id is 172.10.21.255 is this number in between these two network ids and broadcast id absolutely so this is the answer they are looking for 172.10.21.0 172.10.21.255 fantastic let's try another example right this example is a little tricky the reason i put it here is just to show you that what can happen right again 10.210.170.255 slash 23 this is a class a ip address class a is slash 8 in this case it's 23 that means they have borrowed 15 ones we are not bothered about 15 ones what we are bothered about is slash 23 the 23rd bit comes in which octet so if you count 23rd bit comes in the third octet and it is the seventh bit of the third octet which is nothing but has a place value of two so how do we do 
we start with the first network ID 10.0.0.0 what is the broadcast ID before we find out the broadcast ID we need to find out what's the next network ID it is 10.0.2.0 because we need to add 2 to the third octet 10.0.2.0 so 1 minus 10.0.2.0 is 10.0.1.255 so it goes on 10.0.2.0 to 10.0.3.255 4.0 6.0 8.0 it goes on on and on until it reaches 10.0.254.0 the next network id is when you add 2 to it it becomes 256 that's not valid so it is 10.1.0.0 remember from 254.0 if you add 2 it will get reset and it becomes 1.0 exactly like 13 hours 59 minutes 59 second plus 1 is 30 14 hours 0000, zero, zero, zero right similar concept happens here so again it goes 10.1.2.0 1.4.0 1.8 I mean it goes on to 1.254.0 again if you add 2 more it becomes 10.2.0.0 and goes on and on and on until it reaches 10.210.0.0 now if you look at the question we are interested in this 10.210. network so again we'll follow the same thing 10.210.0.0 plus 2 you're adding then you keep adding 10.4.0 10.6.0 10.8.0 it goes on and on until we reach 10.210.170.0 because that's what we are interested in 10.210.170.0 10.210.171.255 this is the network if you look at this this range comes in between these two values two things the reason I give you this example is one whenever you see 255 in any IP address that does not mean it's a broadcast ID we need to calculate it so in this case 10.210.170.255 is not a broadcast ID second we need to check we need to count the slash I mean we need to count your subnet mask values to see which octet we are working in in this case we were working on the third octet I mean of course the carryovers went to the second octets but we were working ideally on the third octet another way to answer this question is because we know the changes are happening on the third octet we could have started at 10.210.0 instead of counting all those numbers so we would count at 10.210.2.0 10.210.4.0 and on and on and on until we reach 10.210.170.0 i mean don't get confused you could do from start from 10.0.0.0 i was just trying to show you a shortcut right i hope there's no confusion i hope you understood what i was trying to say and i hope you understood everything that we learned till now if you have any doubts pause this video or maybe just you know, watch this video again because the concept is very very simple right supernetting this is a beautiful concept now supernetting is a concept that is ideally used in the routing concept and i know that we haven't yet started routing but i wanted to talk about supernetting here because supernetting and subnetting are complementary now subnetting is breaking down a large network into smaller networks and supernetting is exactly the opposite where you take smaller networks and combine it to one big network now it is like this think about usa as one country now subnetting is breaking this large country into small small states let's assume that the whole world is one chunk of land right and let's assume that somebody is traveling from europe to america and uh, let's say we have the signboard like the signboards we have let's say we have a signboard in europe every state is listed down there and it says you want to go you need to take this road i mean that's not practical you will have a massive board instead of that they could just list saying the united states of america you need to take this way that's it so from europe you just have one board which says towards the united states of america you need to go this way very simple isn't it this is what supernetting is all about it is just instead of having multiple entries in your routing table routing table can be compared to the signboards that you have on your highways so instead of having multiple entries on the routing table for different networks the routing table is summarized so that listings are reduced 
if you compare it to, to the real life example it is like how we discussed instead of having all the states of united states on the board they could just say to united states take this road go this way simple isn't it right let's see how it works in the networking industry now if you remember in our last video we did uh, we did subnetting and we 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 broke down this class c uh, ip address into four networks so 192.168.100.0 uh, 100.64, 100.128, 100.192 uh, were four different networks. Now we also know that 192.168.100.0 slash 24, which is nothing but the class C network uh, without subnetting, it included all these IP addresses, right? So it started from here and it ended here. It included all these. 255 or 256 IP addresses included were included in 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Now we broke it down into four networks 192.168.100.0, 100.64, 100.128, 100.192 all slash 26. But if we didn't break it we could represent all these four subnets by representing it as slash 24 and as 192.168.100.0 slash 24, it includes all these four subnets, right? That's what supernetting is. So instead of the router having all these network IDs one by one listed, they could just list one network ID 192.168.100.0 slash 24 and that includes all these four. And this is the secret how the internet can work I mean internet has so many IP addresses and if routers start listing all of them the internet will break summarization is what makes the internet run so efficiently you will see when we talk about routing concepts in one of the future videos you will understand what I'm trying to say but for now just know how supernetting works Right, let's say there were four networks like this, 172, 168, 197.0, 198.0, 99.0, 200.0, 204.0, 206.0, slash 24, all of them. How do we summarize these six IP addresses into one IP address? Firstly, we need to check where this changes. So the first two octets don't change at all, so we are not bothered about it the change is happening in the third octet so let's just convert that into uh, binary in this let's see where is the change now, the first four bits don't change at all it's only the last four bits that change so the green part does not change at all in, in, in if you compare these six only the last uh, 12 bits or rather in this case only the the, uh, the four bits are changing right so how do we convert this into one network so what you do is make everything as zero everything beyond this line as zero so it'll be like this 172.168 dot this part which is if you convert it to decimal it is 192 172.168 192.0 slash 20 how did I get slash 20 is count how many bits are here so this has 8 bits this has 8 bits and the 4 bits here so 8 8 16 plus 4 is 20 so 20 bits 172 168.192.0 slash 20 represents all these 6 networks people who have concentrated would know that slash 20 means there are 16 networks in between this so 172 168.192.0 193.0 192.0 it goes up till 207.0 so we are only representing six networks in that 16 that means there are 10 networks which is already included in this but which is not existent so when we when we uh, summarize we need to make sure that we summarize in a way that includes all of these networks right uh, let's test what you know so these are the questions for you uh, take your time to solve these problems and send your answers in the comment section below this video I hope these videos are really helpful if you don't understand anything watch the last two videos I mean this video and the last video again 
I hope that is enough for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to write into me and I will try to answer as soon as possible. Please don't forget to share these videos on your social media. Thank you so much once again.